I recently uploaded a video called Smooth Camera Settings that went through some of the changes and adjustments you can make in the app to uh, better control your camera gimbal and the drone itself uh, for a smoother flight. Thing is, that's only half the story though. Quite often you actually need to adjust the gimbal and the movement of the drone itself at the same time in order to get that dynamic shot. That's not always a very easy job to do. That's not always an easy job to do and it helps if you know in advance what it is you're actually going to have to do. And that is what I'm talking about today. Hello. So today, as I said, I thought I'd go through some of the ways that you can work out how to adjust the drone and the gimbal as you're flying to get that shot that you're after. So let's start off with one of the uh, simplest shots there is, basically flying forward with the camera angled down. Uh, dead easy, so easy that you see it all the time, and to be honest, it uh, very quickly becomes one of the most boring shots as well. You can very easily break it up by either changing the height, the altitude of uh, what it is you're actually flying, or to turn the drone slightly, or even better, to pan around in a giant circle, uh, focusing on the actual main subject of the video. Revolving around the focal point is a good way to stay focused on something without it getting too boring fast. The go for app has intelligent flight modes and uh, one of them is called point of interest and that handles this for smaller subjects and is really easy to use. But the big downside of it is that you need to start off flying directly over the center before you can actually set it as a center point. Now, whilst the new Mavic 2 does allow you to point to your center target on screen without having to fly over it, the Mavic 1 and the Mavic Air don't. Sometimes you just can't do that if the subject is too big. You do have some other options though. So one of the first and easiest options is to actually fly around your object manually. And uh, it's not actually that hard to fly sideways and keep the camera turning and focused on that same central subject. So to do this manually, you're gonna be using your right stick pressed to the right ever so slightly. That is gonna move the drone sideways, whilst at the same time, moving your left stick to the left ever so slightly, which will turn your drone to the left as you are moving right. The idea is that as your drone moves around to the right, it's gonna continually turn to the left, which means it's gonna be focusing on that same center point as it moves around. But an easier way of doing this is to actually make use of one of the other intelligent flight modes called Active Track. To do this, all you need to do is jump into the intelligent flight mode by clicking the little remote control symbol on the left hand of the screen, then select Active Track. Set the focus of the uh, target and then start flying. As you move the drone, uh, the camera will pretty much stay focused on the same spot. And if that spot happens to be staying static and the drone itself is the thing that's moving, uh, the drone will turn and the camera will remain locked on that. So this is actually using active track in reverse in that it's the drone that's moving and the subject is stationary. But the end result is exactly the same. As the drone is turning around, it will automatically turn and keep the camera locked on that central point, doing all of the work for you. When you're making these manual maneuvers, it's very important that you really do have a very gentle touch on the sticks. And also something that can help you is getting the EXP settings right down. Only move the sticks very gently, very slightly, and again, at the end of the maneuver, just let go of the sticks very slowly and slightly as well, and that'll ensure that the drone starts and stops turning uh, with the same very gentle, smooth uh, movement that you're after. If you're doing a general forward flight and you need to uh, pan round and turn more than just a few degrees, again, it will get quite boring quite quickly. So another thing you can do is to actually uh, do a sharper turn and edit that out and then do a crossfade and actually editing out uh, the middle part of the turn. Uh, a 90 degree pan is gonna get pretty boring pretty fast. So another really good effect is to pan the camera down as it, you're approaching the point of interest. To do this, you do need to have adjusted the gimbal start-stop buffer, which slows down how the uh, gimbal moves as you move the little wheel. Approach the target with the camera pointing down at around 45 degrees. Keep the right stick gently forward to keep the drone flying in a stable forward speed. Then very gently start to roll the thumb wheel to slowly start angling the camera down as you approach the target. Final good trick as well is to do any of these maneuvers in reverse. 
Again, uh, pretty important to make sure that you're not gonna reverse into anything as you're gonna be looking forwards whilst flying backwards. Start off looking down at a particular subject while slowly reversing at a constant speed and panning gently up. And again, this will allow you to reveal all of the landscape around you after initially focusing on something specific. Flying with some of these slower settings does actually need a bit of practice as it takes longer to pan down and when you let go, the camera can carry on panning down a little bit and you'll have a bit of overshoot. Um, end of the day, you need to just practice and uh, make the adjustments as to what suits you. So a few different ideas there. Um, one final point I'd add though is I often say to people that um, half the job is actually in the editing. Um, we all have jerky bits of video that, uh, where it didn't go quite to plan. Cutting out the jerky movements and cross-fading two clips maintains the impression of a nice smooth pan, even if it was actually a bit of a mess when you actually shot the video in the first place. To be honest, we could talk for hours on editing and I think that's a subject for another video on another day. For now, I will point you to the link for the other video I was talking about, Smooth Camera Settings, which outlines the essential changes you're gonna to need to make in the app in order to get these smooth shots. That's about all I want to say for this particular video. I didn't want it to go on too long. If you've got any other additional tips or some good settings, uh, drop a comment on the uh, comments below. So until next time, have fun and happy flying, guys.